particular member. He likes to talk about unpopularity, and uh, I think he's probably an expert in not unpopularity, particularly when it comes to talking about trains between Waikato and Auckland. Boy, is that member confused about that issue. Uh, Mr Speaker, <laughs> Mr Speaker, um, My colleague Darren Hughes says we will be voting in support of the first reading of the Land, Transport, Road, Safety and Other Matters Amendment Bill. Um, and uh, you know, we support it because we have done a lot in road safety over the last nine years. A lot of what this, uh, this, this bill uh, builds on, although there's some gaps in it, but I'll get to those, uh, it builds on Labour's own programme that was called See You There, Safe Ads. Remember that? That's excellent, excellent road safety programme that touched on many of the areas that the government is now promoting through its Safer Journeys programme. Um, so, you know, uh, as I say, there's been a lot of good work done, and I want to acknowledge that. This is a very comprehensive bill, um, and I'm, uh, again, I join my colleague in saying I'm disappointed about its fast-tracking through the Select Committee process. Our Select Committee, I'm a member of the Transport and Industrial Relations Select Committee, and we're quite busy, actually, Mr Speaker. We've got a couple of major employment law uh, bills in front of us with hundreds and hundreds and thousands of decisions to be heard in a very short time frame. Yet here we have a very serious issue about road safety being rushed through as well. And I think the chances to genuinely consider what's in this bill will be curtailed by that process. Mr Speaker, I want to talk about two issues. I'm interested, uh, the Minister didn't say anything about them, but I'm interested in uh, two things. One is about the provisions around work time <coughs> and the tightening up of log books, uh, a chain of responsibility in relation to truck drivers. And the second, thing, the second uh, issue I want to talk about is young drivers and increasing the age from 15 to 16. Now, in 2009, there were 54 people killed in truck-related accidents. Um, 1,133 people were injured. And economic factors are having a, a direct impact on the death and injury toll in this industry. Now, so while I'm pleased to see that there will be a little bit of tightening up around the work, book, uh, uh, work and logbook uh, rules, I'm pleased to see that, and I'm also pleased to see the reference to chain of responsibility. I don't think it goes anywhere far enough. Uh, there has been a, a lot done on truck safety over the last... Uh, nine years, or 15 years in fact, because there was an inquiry into truck crashes in the late 1990s. Um, <clears throat> we had a horrific uh, accident injury rate, and there's been a lot of things done. There's been safety improvements, truck, uh, uh, and truck injuries and deaths have reduced, even though it's still one person a week dying in a truck-related accident. Um, although as a percentage of all road users, truck-related deaths and injuries are actually flatlining. But the problem that isn't being addressed and that this bill doesn't address is the fact that the trucking industry, the transport industry, the road freight industry, which is growing massively, we know that the, the freight task is going to increase massively over the next 30 years. What is not being addressed is the hyper-competitive nature of the industry, the very tight margins for the business and the unsafe contracting that's going on for owner-drivers. So way back in April, there was a story in the Sunday Star Times um, about some owner drivers and about what was happening for them. And it was a horrific story about what was happening to them and, and the, the link between the way they were being treated through their owner driver contracts and uh, unsafe driving, dangerous driving. And so I proposed to the Transport and Industrial Relations Select Committee at that time that we should look at an investigation. Now, of course, that was just uh, dismissed out of the hand and the government voted against it. But, you know, this, this is a serious issue, Mr Chair. It was after truck drivers talked with me about the problems in their industry with unfair and unsafe contracting for owner drivers, leading them to drive up to 100 hours a week. 100 hours a week. Now, the limit is 70 hours a week. They're scrimping on maintenance and they're taking risks that impact not only on them and their families, but all road users. And it's an industry-wide problem with truck and courier companies who are squeezing owner drivers. Now, the, the, as I said, it's a highly marginal and competitive industry, and the monopoly at the top of the transport industry chain, or the supply chain, 
a duopoly in our supermarket industry squeezes the prices downwards. So it's not just the people, the, con the, the, the contractors that are contracting with the owner drivers, it's the people above them, the people at the top of the supply chain, and that's where chain of responsibility comes in, in relation to um, health and safety. Drivers have been saying to me that they're so cash-strapped that they often take risks uh, with, without repairing their trucks to save money. And uh, I've heard from them awful stories about how they run their tyres down to the rims on the inner side, you know, because you know, trucks, big trucks have two tyres on the inner, inside tyre. They're running them down to the rims because they, can't, because they can't afford to replace them. And what they've also been telling me is that it's very common for truck drivers to fall asleep behind the wheel, uh, to drive without certificates of fitness and repair work to save money, to fiddle log books and cover up illegal hours, to rack up debt on credit cards and bank loans and remortgage their homes to cover living expenses. And they suffer as a result of that horrendous marriage and family stress um, and a lack of holidays because, of course, they have no rights because they're contractors. Um, they have no bargaining power. And they said, uh, they've told me that this all adds to the pressure of the job, which includes night, night shifts and uh, being on call 24 hours a day. Now, these drivers are on our roads. And this legislation does nothing to deal with this problem. It does nothing to deal with it. It fiddles with the work time rule, the logbook rule. It fiddles with the chain of responsibility. And it's interesting when you look at the chain of responsibility legislation which Labor brought in, which Labor brought in, there have been so few prosecutions under that legislation. It's been in for a couple of years. Um, and I was pleased that, I think it was in July, there was a there was a big prosecution, conviction of an Auckland transport uh, port firm um, for allowing its drivers to breach work time and logbook rules. Um, and that was good. It was good there was a successful prosecution, but, Mr Speaker, there's been so few of them. You know, and so what's happening is the responsibility for the health and safety of these drivers and the other road users, um, is, it should be pinned on the people that are requiring them to do that, but it's not happening. And so I'll be looking very closely at the provision, even though the Minister didn't mention it, actually, the, the chain of responsibility uh, provision in this bill uh, to see if it makes any difference. Because, as I said, we're having one truck-related death a week and many injuries, and it's still going on week after week after week. Now, the other issue I wanted to um, talk about, Mr Speaker, was the issue of the driving age. The issue of the driving age, uh, Mr Henare, I thought you might be interested in this, because I think my, my immediate... While we're supporting this for select committee, we will be very interested to hear evidence about what difference, if any raising the driving age to 16 will make. I think that is... I th Pardon? We've got it. We've got it from every other country. We've got it from... And that it surely is what the select committee is... Oh, that is what the select committee process is for. But I think this is... A, putting, putting, the, putting the driving age up is plucking low-hanging fruit. It's one of those things everybody says is going to fix the problem. It's going to fix the problem. Let's pick on the young people and put the driving age up. But again... Let's pick on them. Let's, but, you know, without finding out, without finding out if it's going to make any difference. I'm looking forward to hearing from young people during the select committee process. Um, as I say, I mean, Labor's supporting this. We'll listen to the arguments and we'll make a decision on the driving age at the end of that. Um, and as uh, Darren Hughes said, um, actually, we could have done something about the zero tolerance, um, zero alcohol tolerance for under 20s some time ago. There's been a bill languishing in, our select, in, a, in a select committee uh, called the Sale and Supply of Liquor and Liquor Enforcement Bill. Uh, been languishing for two years. And in March, in March of this year, we offered the government support to fast track that legislation. We offered support. We said, look, it's all ready to go. It's been heard. Let's, let's, let's do it. Now, what happened? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, our support remains on that issue. Our support remains on that issue. It also, our offer to fast track that bit of legislation also offers, it also stands. But however, what we're doing in this bill is, as I said, picking the low hanging fruit, picking on the young people. Let's just get on and make sure that we look at the real issues. And I hope that we will have a genuine opportunity to do that in select committee. I call Catherine Delahunty.